Greetings, everyone. This is Fred Coulter on Church at Home. Church at Home is dedicated to restoring original Christianity for today. Whatever happened to the truth that Jesus Christ and the apostles brought? Whatever happened to the truth that is in the Bible, which men now ignore and reject and won't accept? They look at certain places in the Bible and say, oh, we don't need that. And, well, we don't know about this, and we don't know about that. But when you really check it out and prove it, the Bible is true. It is the Word of God, from the God of truth who cannot lie, to this world, and to his church, and to the nations, as well as what we would say, the end-time modern 12 tribes of Israel, because that also is all figured in in the prophecies and the scheme of the Bible and understanding where we are and where we're going. And the most misunderstood topic of all is the kingdom of God. And also, as we have seen, there are two kingdoms that rule. Number one, the kingdom of God, of which we'll see Jesus Christ is the coming king and will bring it with him when he returns. And number two, the kingdom of Satan the devil. And he is the God of this world. And as we saw, because men reject God and men reject the truth and get all caught up in their vanities and all caught up in their the ways that they are doing, that they invite Satan in. Whenever you reject God, you invite Satan in. Remember that as a principle. Whether it is you as an individual, or whether it is a group, or whether it is uh, a region, whether it is a country, whether it is collective countries, whether it is the whole world. And so we have to, we have to look at the scriptures and understand where we are today. Now, there's a very interesting prophecy in 1 John, the fifth chapter, which says the whole world is in the wicked one or under the control of the wicked one. Now, except those who have the Spirit of God. So what I want you to do is download the article, Who and What is a True Christian? And as you read that, ask yourself the question, how many today are really true spirit-filled Christians that believe all of the Word of God and that keep the commandments of God and that keep His Sabbath and His holy days? And that brings it down to a very, very small, narrow group as we saw when we started this series that when Jesus returns, he says, will he find the true faith on the earth? So I want you to think about that. And that's what we want you to do when you come to church at home. We're going to ask questions. We want you to ask questions. We want you to check your Bible. We want you to make sure that you understand that you have a good Bible one that is properly translated because there are so many translations out there that it gets confusing. And of course, isn't it interesting? Satan, the devil's main enemy, are those who are Christians. And as we saw, there are those who stealthily infiltrated the church, and they don't know it. But they're not under the jurisdiction and kingdom of God now rather under Satan the devil and a counterfeit Christianity. So we need to keep that in mind. So the kingdom of God encompasses the whole Bible. Actually, the, the whole theme of the Bible is the kingdom of God, answered in the question, who is your God? And whom do you obey? Now, we saw in the book of Daniel that God raises up the nations. And here's what he told Nebuchadnezzar 
when Nebuchadnezzar had the dream as to what would happen to him if he didn't turn from his sins. But it tells us something very important we need to realize on how the nations of the world figure in to God's rule. Because as we saw, God rules the world with Satan and his evil angels and God and his righteous angels. And then separate from that rule then is the true church of God. And we'll get into that a little bit later. But let's concentrate on what God told Nebuchadnezzar. And as I read this verse, I want you to think about the nations of the world. And why today? It seems as though nothing, nothing is going right. I wonder if that's the intention of the kingdom of Satan. Because men have so rejected God. Now, Daniel 4, when Nebuchadnezzar lost his sanity for seven years, verse 17 tells us this, This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand of the word of the holy ones. Now, those are the angels of God who rule this world. There are principalities and there are powers, both righteous and both wicked. And then, for those who have the Spirit of God, then there is the Spirit of God being the power of God within them. Though we live in the world, we're not part of the world. And though we are looking forward to the kingdom of God, we're not there yet, because as we will see, Jesus brings it when he comes. Back to verse 17. So that the living may know that the Most High rules in the kingdoms of men and gives it to whomever he will and sets up over it the basest of men. Now, think about that for just a minute. Is that not true of nearly every single nation of the world? And let's also ask the question, what happens when a man comes in who is really God-fearing in what he knows of the true God, honest in what he's doing, trying to benefit the people, well, what happens to him? He is attacked verbally. He is smeared. He has stopped in Congress or in Parliament, or a dictatorship comes in and takes over, and the people suffer. And God makes all of these measurements and all of these judgments based upon how a nation is either doing evil or seeking to do right. And God blesses the nations if they're seeking to do right and come under his jurisdiction as much as they, they know. Now, this is not having to deal with too true Christianity. That's another question entirely indeed. This is just the question of those who recognize the Creator God, recognize that there are certain laws of God that need to be in the governments. And if they do that, then the nations will be blessed. But what happens? You can go through the history of any country, any nation, any empire, and you can see what? They rise, and they fall. Another one rises, and it falls. And there are wars, and there are fightings, and there are invasions. All of these things have to do with what we're reading here in Daniel 4.17. Now, we find something very interesting in Daniel 10. So let's go there and read this, because... There are spiritual powers behind wars, especially major wars. Well, we can say behind any kind of violence, there are spiritual powers. Don't you think behind the, the gangs that worship Satan the devil, that Satan is behind those? Yes, look at the big cities ruled by evil people, the gangs. 
I mean, there are certain parts of, of Los Angeles and Chicago and Philadelphia and New York and Washington, D.C. You don't go down there. You don't go in there. And unless you cooperate with the gangs, you're in trouble. Now, likewise, when you have governments that are dictatorships, and you can look at those in the Soviet Union, in Germany, in China, today in Venezuela, and in Zimbabwe, look at what has happened to those nations because the basest of men have been raised up over them. So there is war. Now we find in Daniel, the 10th chapter, that Daniel was praying and fasting to God for three whole weeks, asking God to intervene and give him understanding of the prophecies and what was going to happen to the children of the Jews from the kingdom of Judah that were soon going to be on their way back to Judea to build the temple and set it up again so the prophecy of the coming Messiah could be fulfilled. And that there were battles between Persia and Media and Babylon. And lots of times we think, oh, well, these wars are just there. All right, let's read it here. Verse 12, when Gabriel the angel came and talked to him, he said, do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before God, your words were heard, and I have come because of your words. Key principle. Every time anyone truly seeks God and prays to God, whether it is just a single person or whether it is a family, whether it is a church, whether it is a nation, if they seek God and honor God, God will hear. Why was he three weeks and not coming to Daniel with God's answer to that prayer? All right. Verse 13, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. Now that is the satanic prince behind the ruler of Persia. And so, there are spiritual battles behind the scenes that we don't know of. All we see are the battles like we would see in a newsreel, or if you're right in the middle of the army, those things that are going on. Then he continues and says, Then lo, Michael, who is one of the angels of God, one of the chief princes came to help me, for I had been there alone with the kings of Persia. So he needed help. And this was necessary for Cyrus to come to the throne to fulfill the prophecy of Isaiah, where God said he would raise up Cyrus and he would come and he would conquer Babylon. And it was quite an interesting thing. The prophecy said that the river would dry up and that the armies of Persia would come in and the big gates that were right down along the Euphrates River in the city of Babylon would be left open. And that's exactly how Cyrus and his armies came in. They diverted the Euphrates River, came right through, the gates were open, and he came in, and that was the end of the dynasty of Nebuchadnezzar with his great-great-grandson, Belshazzar. So there are wars. Now let's look at another scripture which defines it even more. Let's come here to 2 Kings, the 6th chapter. This was in the days of Elisha. And there were the armies of the Syrians that were surrounding Samaria. And it looked like for sure that the end had come and they were going to be carried off into captivity as God had told them. Now, there were several, several invasions from the, the king of Syria, and then later from Assyria, and they were carried off in captivity. And God raised up the army to carry them off in captivity, because remember, the kingdom of God rules in all the kingdoms of this world through the powers of the righteous angels and the powers 
of the evil angels under Satan the devil, and the New Testament talks about the kingdom of Satan as well. So here was this battle that was going on. And Elisha had a servant with him. He said, oh, what are we going to do? The city's surrounded. The armies have got us. Now notice Elisha's answer, verse 16, 2 Kings 6. And he answered, do not fear, for those with us are more than those with them. But if you just look standing there, what did he see? Elisha and his servant. Now how can there be more with them than with the enemy? So what did Elisha do? Notice this prayer to God, verse 17. And Elisha prayed and said, I pray you, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round Elisha. So there's the spiritual army, unseen. And this goes on whenever there is a war between the forces of of it can be the forces of evil against each other because the kingdom of Satan is divided, so it's not going to stand. It can be the forces of good versus the forces of evil, and it can be the forces of of the angels of God who are holy against the angels of Satan, the devil, and there is the war going on. Now, I don't know if you've had a chance to watch the Third Reich and the occult, which really was telling us that they were devoted to Satan the devil. And they were trying to get extra knowledge through the occult on how to make the super weapons of the rockets and atomic bombs and all of the things that now have been developed. Now let's come back here to Revelation, the 12th chapter, and let's see, yes, there are wars in heaven. Can you imagine that? And think about it. Lots of times, people, when they see some of these beautiful pictures of the universe out there, and they see many of the things that look like a lot of junk, well, what you're seeing is a lot of junk, which came from wars. Wars between Satan and his angels, who are actually demons. And in this case, Michael, remember we read of him back there in Daniel, the 10th chapter, and his angels fighting in heaven. Revelation 12, verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels warred against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels warred. But they did not prevail, neither was their place found any more in heaven. Now, this is a battle that took place, as we will see, once before in the past. And it is also a prophecy of a battle which is soon to come, which then will usher in the time when the Great Tribulation starts. And we're living in those days, and there are not, there's not too much time left before that will occur. So we need to understand What does the Word of God tell us? Here's what it tells us. Now, let's also understand what happened when Satan was cast down and why Satan is called the God of this world, the prince of the power of the air, the one who controls all the nations, as we saw. Let's read it. Verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, the ancient serpent who is called the devil and Satan, who is deceiving the whole world. He was cast down to the earth, and his angels were cast down with him. Now, that's something to really understand. He has his angels, and he's deceiving the whole world. So you combine the two now where we started that God raises up over the nations the basest of men. And Satan is working in the scenes, behind the scenes, and many cases, many of these leaders devotedly worship Satan and the various pagan gods, by w- the names by which he is called, but they're actually worshiping Satan, the devil, you see. And what they think is right 
they're being deceived, deceiving the whole world. Now, as we have seen, as we've covered previously, he's deceiving people concerning religion. He's deceiving people concerning the things that are going on in the world. He is the power behind the scene, making all of these evil things occur because men give themselves over to Satan, the devil. Yes, indeed. Now, I want you also to ask yourself another question. Has he deceived Christianity? And the answer is yes. That's why church at home to restore original Christianity. So that we know what the Bible says. We know what the word of God really means. Now, God expects us to apply ourselves. He expects us to search the scriptures whether these things are so. He expects us to prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. So I don't want you to believe me. I want you to believe your Bible, and I want you to get in your Bible if you're really serious about understanding the truth and understanding who God is and where God is. Well, we'll help you right here at church at home, but you have to do the work. It's just like the children of Israel when they came out of the land of Egypt, said God brought them out on eagles' wings. Well, that meant God was leading them, But they had to walk, and they had to do the work. So likewise with you, if you are serious about God, the truth of God, the Bible of God, the Word of God, and you want to know what's happening today in prophecy, you want to know how you can get your life squared around, you want to know how the world has been deceived and is currently being actively deceived, and you want to come out from underneath the power and darkness of Satan, the devil, and his kingdom, which is ruling this world, then you need to start getting your nose into the Bible and really believing it. Prove these things. Don't just accept it because someone says so. Don't accept the church denomination just because they've been there for many, many years. The question is, do they believe God? Do they believe the Word of God? Now let's come back here to Isaiah, the 14th chapter, where we have an account of Satan, the devil, wanting to take over the throne of God. Satan has always wanted to be God. He's always wanted to be worshipped. And as we will see in Revelation 13 at the end time, the whole world is going to worship Satan the devil. Will you be one of those? Will you be deceived? Will you think that the coming Antichrist is really the true Messiah? Well, we'll talk about that, how Christ is going to return. All right, Isaiah 14, verse 9. Hell from beneath is excited over you to meet you at your coming. It stirs up the spirits of the dead for you, even all the chief ones of the earth. It is raised from their thrones all the kings of the nations. And that's what's going to happen right at the end time in Revelation 16, when they all fight the coming of Christ. Now, we'll see that before we finish the series on the kingdom of God. And all of them shall speak and say to you, Have you become weak as we? Have you become like us? Speaking of Satan the devil? Here's what caused the rebellion. Here's what caused the war related back there in Revelation, the 12th chapter. Your pride is brought down to the grave, and the noise of your harps, the maggot is spread over you, and the worms over you. Now, that's talking about the beast power of the book of Revelation, who is going to be possessed by Satan, the devil. And that's why they will worship him. Notice, talking about the one who became Satan. How you have fallen from the heavens. That's what it said back there in Revelation 12, correct? Cast down, yes. O shining star, son of the morning, how you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. And remember, what did Satan say to Jesus? If you'll worship me, I'll give you all the glory of all of the nations. 
because it has been given to me and I have authority to give it to whomsoever I will. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into the heavens. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. And that's what Satan wanted to be. He was lifted up in pride and in vanity and in the beauty of the glory that God had created in him. And he rebelled against God. And he took a third of the angels with him, and they became demons. So we have this constant battle going on between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan, the devil. And the whole story of, of the Bible, the whole reason for the Bible is to show how God is going to overcome Satan, the devil, and how he is going to save mankind from the clutches of the devil, because going clear back to Adam and Eve, they rejected the truth of God, they rejected the true God, and they wanted to go their own way. So that's why we have these two kingdoms in the world, kingdom of Satan and the kingdom of God. Now I want you to write for this book, or email us, The Occult Holidays, or God's Holy Days Witch. This is the most vital, fundamental book that you need. Now, if you are truly serious about understanding the Bible, you would need this book because it will show you where the world has gone wrong with their occult holidays. And you need to understand about God's Sabbath and his holy days. It will be a mind-opening, and if I can use a modern expression, mind blowing reading for you. This will help you understand how we got to where we are today. So once again, thank you for inviting me into your home. And please visit our other website, cbcg.org. So until next time, this is Fred Calder saying, so long, everyone.